Hi everyone, this is Fox, and this is the fourth video in my Sony Vegas Tutorials series. In this video, we'll take a look at two different approaches to editing in Sony Vegas. Now, traditionally, Sony Vegas editors have used the timeline to edit their video. Remember, the timeline is down here at the bottom. However, many, many, many video editors are used to systems that primarily focus on using a trimmer or viewer window first and then bringing that footage after it's been worked with into the timeline. However, a timeline editing approach uses primarily or exclusively the timeline, this window down here, and a trimmer or viewer approach uses both this secondary window and the timeline together. Editing is done in both. Now you may wonder why use a second window if you can do it all in one window and you'll see why that has typically been the way that video editors have worked with video and you'll also see why working with video primarily in the timeline is not as messy and complicated as some video editors would have you believe. My preference has personally been to use the second window to use a trimmer or viewer window first and you'll see why. All right, first I have a clip here. I just brought this clip in, dropped it there. This is a trimmer window. Now, when we use the trimmer window, we're approaching video editing in the more traditional sense. We put an in point and an out point up here and bring it down to the timeline. Let's do that now so you can see how it works. And you've seen me do this before. I'm gonna use my jog and shuttle wheels to work through this video and find the part where this gentleman just enters the frame and we want it right before he enters. Okay, so there he is. Okay, so right before he enters. We'll put our endpoint with the I key, and we'll scroll through until he just exits the frame. He's gone, and we'll put our out point with our O key, hit A to add video, and we've added it to the timeline. That is adding in the trimmer window. And you do the same thing with a second uh, video clip. For example, let's say we want it here and here, and once again add, and you would continue to do that, adding stuff to the timeline. Let's undo that. All right. Let's bring that clip back in of the gentleman walking over the stone bridge. Oh, and by the way, I've got some questions about where this is. This is actually in Akashi Park in Hyogo in Japan. That's a prefecture in Japan, which is like a state. So um, you probably haven't been here unless you visited Japan. All right. So let's take a look at how to do that using the timeline. Now, just to show you that you can do it with the timeline and only the timeline, let's get rid of our trimmer window by going up to the X here and closing that out. Don't worry, the trimmer window will come back and I'll show you that later. Let's make our preview window a little bit bigger. There we go. So now we can see more of our project media. If we had lots of clips, you would be able to see more of them because there's more, there's more space here. We want this clip, so we'll drag it down into the timeline or a faster and easier way, double click the, trip, the clip. Excuse me. All right, so let's find that part where we see the gentleman cr crossing the bridge here. Scroll through. Oh, they, there he is. Back it up. He's walking backwards. Okay. Whoops, there's his hand. See his little hand right there? We want to back up right before that. Okay. That, whoops, I'm, I'm thinking trimmer window mode. I even put an in point. We don't need to put an in point. At this point, we can just drag the clip to trim it up. However, look, it left some space. We would normally have to drag the clip over all the way. There's an easier way to do that. Let's undo and watch. Turn on ripple you can either push control L or click this icon. Now when I drag this clip all the way over, it snaps back to where I want the clip to start. Let's find the part where this gentleman just exits the frame. Scrolling through. Oh, there he is, okay, and he is gone. All right, now we take this other edge and drag it to the, to the cursor that we have here. And there we go, we've edited using only the timeline. And you could continue to do this with as, as many uh, video clips as you'd like. For example, let's say in this one we want to edit to this point and this point. And there we go, we're editing in the timeline. Now this feels very strange to me because I've always been taught that you, you put your in and your out points, you find what you want, and then you put it in the timeline. Now either way, doesn't matter. Both ways are equally valid. Both ways work. You can work with large projects using both methods. Um, some people have a preference for one method over another, and some more traditional video editors may feel that using the timeline can be a bit messy or uh, unnecessarily complicated. Let me show you why some people might say that. 
So we have no trimmer window. We only have our timeline. I'm going to pull in this clip again, and we're going to pretend that these are different clips. And I'm just going to add some clips here. And this is a bit, um, I'm just sort of popping them in here. And whoops, I did some overlapping there. Let's undo all that. I made the mistake of not putting my cursor at the end. Let's pop that one in there, this one in there, that one again. How about this right here and this one? All right, well, let's say that I want to split these two clips right there. And right there, I want to put this clip again. And right here, I want to put this clip. All right. So you see we have a lot of clips here. We have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. 11 clips total. Let's say we're going to zoom in a bit that we don't want, let's zoom back out, I'm sorry, this clip right here. Let's turn off auto rippling. We want to get rid of this clip and we want to put another clip in there. So we want it to be from the same video clip, the same uh, source footage, but we want a different portion because maybe someone in the background, you can see in the background there was walking by and waving and we don't want someone waving at the camera. It breaks the, the fourth wall. Well, how would you do that? Well, let's see here. Um, put my cursor there, double click. Well, that fills it, but well, wait a minute. We don't want that. Let's undo that. Let's pick a longer piece of footage so I can show you what I mean. It, well, let's undo that. Okay, see, this is how I feel that this can get a bit confusing. Now, maybe it's me, and I'm sure some people will criticize me for just not knowing how to edit in the timeline. But you see how we've we've done this? Well, I could go ahead and pull this back. But um, what if I'm trying to find a... Hang on a second here. All right. See, you see how I have to sort of overlap other clips while working with this one? And we sort of get this cross dissolve while working with it. Well, what you can do there is go ahead and add a second video track and work with the video track on top. So let's say I want to shorten this up and we're going to turn on rippling once more. I want to bring it here and uh, let's say I feel like that's an acceptable spot so I can bring it there and then I could just bring it down. And there we go. You can turn off event grouping to move the audio turn back on event grouping and we've edited but you notice that we have some extra tracks left over because we were working with the video in the timeline and we needed a space to work let's undo all of that okay and undo that extra track now watch we're gonna go up to viewer turn the trimmer back on so we can view it and then we're going to make the trimmer a little larger okay there we go we're going to bring that clip in here, and then we're going to find our in and our out points that we want up here first. See, now we don't need to bring in any extra clips. So let's grab this right here, and we could even do a fit to fill at this point. So what I can do is put this here, double click that to highlight this area, then click this fit to fill, and it fills that with our clip. Now be careful, a fit to fill will change the timing of the clip. So if you have movement or speaking, you'll definitely hear the difference. So you can see why I prefer to use the trimmer window to edit, because you don't need extra tracks. But you can also see why someone might prefer the timeline approach, because the timeline approach involves less windows and less places you're working with your video. All right, that's it for this video. I hope this was useful. And uh, play around with both methods. Find which method works best for you, and go ahead and leave a comment. Tell me why you think it's better or why it's best for you. I'll see you next time.